That's a beauty red belt. Oh, Fomentopsis pinacola, red belted polypore. Pinacola stands for growing on pine trees, right? So firs, pines, hemlocks, spruce. This mushroom loves all of those types of trees. So most of the medicine is in the outer growing ring and in the spore pad and the tubes underneath there just so common and easy to find that we know we can find medicine out of it. I'm gonna pull this one off the tree. If we do that, we wanna either cut around, so we're not gonna damage the bark, get in there and try to pop it off like that. We pulled a little bit of bark off here. Now, we don't wanna to pull too much bark off. Even though the tree's dead, the mushroom is now colonizing this. So the mycelium requires this bark in order to protect it so it can grow more mushrooms and keep itself from drying out. So a little bit like that, no big deal. But when we're pulling them off, if we rip a lot of bark off, we might have major issues in seeing that tree produce more mushrooms in the future. Mmm, this one almost smells like, like watermelon rind or something like that. It's got a nice kind of fresh smell. There's a lot of volatile oils in it. And traditionally, this was used by the natives of this part of the world for holding fire was one of the things. So they put it into a buffalo horn or some kind of container, and when it's all dried, they would put it in and keep fire to go from one campsite to the other. Now another way this mushroom was used is it was dried and powdered and stored to be used for wounds and bleeding. So if there's extensive bleeding, this could be packed into a wound and it'll stop that bleeding as a herbal band-aid. It also is a immune modulating mushroom. So it has a lot of benefits for helping to keep the body at a higher level of function. Just like all the other conchs, it's got branched polysaccharides in it. So this was often cut up into pieces and put into soups by a lot of the native coastal peoples. This would help preserve the soup for a longer period of time because it had antiseptic properties. It would also give it a little bit of flavor from all the flavonoids and the volatile oils in there. And it would preserve it and make it immune boosting. So. Great one to add into your stalks and broths. So if I've got this on the tree still, I might take a knife and just kind of cut a little piece of this outer rim off. Start chewing on that. Mmm, help sink me into that forest. This is quite tasty when it's fresh. People commonly mistake this for reishi because of this big red or orange belt. Now a lot of these are very different from each other. Sometimes they'll have this red belt and sometimes they'll have no belt. But it's pretty easy to tell what they are based on their hardness, their brownness, and when you score the underneath, you don't get any markings. Here's some pretty nice red belts. Love these, Fomentopsis pinacola. See how healthy and strong that one is. Now I love to see a tree like this where, you see how it's fallen down? <clears throat> Landed here. Now here we used to have a mushroom going that way. We can tell by this growth. See how it's now growing the other way? Started growing that way. Then it adapted and started growing this way. That's probably about a three to four year old mushroom, which makes this tree have fallen down about three to four years ago. I bet there's lots more like that. Check out all those ones. You know, some people like to collect antlers as trophies. I'm a bit of a mushroom buff. So I think this is gonna be my trophy mushroom of this season. At one point it was standing upright and the mushroom was growing this way, like so. And then as the tree fell, it started to grow this way. Mm, a really nice smell, good fragrance, and just an awesome potent medicine to use in the winter months.